in this episode. I got it. Okay. It's recording, by the way. Oh, decent. We'll edit that in post. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Figure Welcome to the 21st episode of the Potato Man Podcast, brought to you by Middle of Nowhere Entertainment. I am Bumpy Rug. You can find me on twitch.tv slash Bumpy Rug. I will be streaming tonight, and I usually stream on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Talking about figuring it out, you say that every week you have a new schedule. I, I am Raven F. You can find me on twitch.tv slash Raven F on Twitter at Raven F zero underscore O. Still the best I can get it due to being a douchebag back in the day. And you can follow me on Instagram at Raven F underscore. I also will be streaming tonight after the podcast as well. Uh, really quick, I want to say thank you to all of these people that just followed the stream. I believe it was through Facebook. Some might be Twitch. I don't know. But we just got flooded with followers. And uh, thank Peace. you all so very much. It's awesome. Um, this. I'm telling you, man, this, this channel is taking off a bit better than my personal channel. So, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Big ouch. I know, right? Hey, it is what it is, man. You know, it's, it's we must be putting out some content or they might be coming to see your face. I don't know. Hey, my face. Uh, so oh. this episode, uh, we're going to kick it off with the Nintendo Direct. Um, I, I got to watch a little bit of it. I, I apologize. I didn't really watch the entire thing. Um, but we're both real big fans of Pokemon and uh, I know Neff hasn't really gotten the chance to play sword and shield. Talked about it a couple times on the podcast. Um, huge fan of sword and shield. I know a lot of long time Pokemon fans aren't, are take too well to it for, you know, the decks. It, you know, some people don't like the wild area. It, it, it's hit or miss with a lot of people. Well, regardless, they just announced that they won't be doing a third title attached to it. So, like how we got yellow, how we got emerald, you know, platinum, uh, the third game that kind of connects the two that we got. Well, instead of that, they're going to give us an expansion pass. It's thirty dollars, but a lot of stuff in this. They announced a couple new Galarian forms, uh, Galarian Slowpoke, which you can actually download today and get a miniature cutscene in one of the metro stations where one comes in. And it's kind of a cool little teaser to it. Unfortunately, it's not coming out until I think like june or july of 2020 and then fall of this year we'll get the second half of the expansion um the first expansion it kind of teased to the legendary birds uh Moltres, San Rikuno, and zapdos with their galarian forms or it could be their gigantamax it's kind of up to speculation but they finally put bulbasaur and squirtle's evolution line back in the game and everybody is happy I'm a long-time Squirtle fan. I know you're a long-time Squirtle fan. I'm happy to see him back in. I, I knew it was going to be a matter of time. A lot of uh, data miners saw that they had put them back in the game. It's code. And it everybody knew it was coming. I mean, they're not just going to put Charizard in and then not put the other two. But regardless, I'm only touching on a little bit. They showed two new Regis, um, an Electric Regie and a Dragon-type Regie. Uh, the initial starters, Score Bunny, Grookey, and a little water dude, Swamp, Swimble, Swamble. I can't remember his fucking name. I never used him. Um, he, he's a uh, Gigantamax forms too, which I personally think they should have given him to him at the beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm definitely going to pick it up. Unfortunately, though, well, fortunately and unfortunately, if you have a copy of Sword and Shield, you're probably going to be paying $60 for this pass because the DLC is different for both games. You're not going to get the same experience. You know, Sword's going to have a different experience in their DLC than Shield is. It's two different rivals. One's a Psychic-type rival. One's a Poison-type rival. And uh, the stories, they kind of alluded to being a little bit different. Am I upset they're not going to put a third game in? No, they really don't need it. This one's so new that why would they just announce, hey, we're going to do a third one? You, you don't need it. I think the DLC is a smart move. Even if you're paying $30, you're getting a ton more Pokemon. They even tease that there's going to be new, like brand new Pokemon added to it, not just Galarian forms. So, I mean, like for people like myself, I've already completed my decks. I'm onto my shiny hunts. I got nothing left story based left to do really. I mean, unless I want to complete the curry decks and I'm not, I'm not doing that at all. Um, well, why not? Come on now. Don't be a bitch. Dude, I can't cook in real life. I'm not cooking in that game. <laughs> um, it's it, The only thing you really get for the completing the curry decks is you get golden utensils to use to cook curry. If you already got the golden utensils, why are you going to cook anymore? You've done everything curry-wise. It doesn't do anything for you. It doesn't 
it, there's no point in doing it. It doesn't boost base stats. It doesn't really do anything. I mean, it increases the happiness if you're trying to evolve a happiness-based Pokemon, but right. uh, I'm not doing that crap. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that that's kind of cool seeing, you know, that they, uh, they're doing the expansion pass and everything. I'm going to get it. I wish it wasn't so far out, but I understand it. At least they announced it, and Nintendo kind of was just like, hey, here's all this crap we're throwing at you, and we're not even going to tease a whole lot. We're just going to tell you flat out what it is, and I kind of like that. So you, you know what you're getting out of it. You're getting your money's worth, and you know that. All right. Hmm. So, I'll, uh, I'll eventually get it. I mean, I kind of uh, burnt up all my gifts for this year by getting this PC from, you know, people. So, namely Suicide, Whoopsie, and their mother. So I can't really uh yeah, I can't really ask for like a switch to be able to play Pokemon or anything, but maybe but at some point I'll get it and I'll try it out. Because, uh, yeah, this this whole curry thing is intriguing to me for something so it's the dumbest thing they've ever put into a Pokemon game. And it's that, a and that, game. That's it. And that's why that's why I think that I find it so intriguing because it's so it it feels so random. It's absolutely so random and odd to be put into a game. I mean, I could see it if it was like a survival game, you know, uh, whatever. But for it to be in a Pokemon game, it's just so weird. But, you know, it is what it is. It's it's the equivalent of like the beauty contest from Ruby and Sapphire. And like, it, it's a mini game. Wow. It, it's a mini game. That's all it is. It's a mini game. It's something else to do to break up the monotony of, you know, Max Raid Dens, um, which speaking of Max Raid Dens, they actually announced that you'll be able to go underground into the Max Raid Dens to catch previous legendary Pokemon like Deoxys and Lugia and Ho-Oh and just past legendaries and stuff like that. I think the uh, the Weather Trio and uh, Palkia, Dialga, just the list goes on and on. But it's good to see that they're adding a bunch of Pokemon. Plus, you got Pokemon Bank coming, or Pokemon Home, which is a hybrid of Pokemon Bank to where all your Pokemon from previous titles, Pokemon Go, Pokemon Let's Go, all the uh, previous Pokemon games, you can throw them all into this cloud save style thing, and you can uh, pretty much put them directly into Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. Gotcha. And that's like a monthly fee that you got to pay. I think Pokemon Bank that they have now, that's just for the DS games, is like five bucks for a year subscription. So right. it's not expensive. Decent, man. I'm going to have to, uh, at some point I'll play it. Like I told you before, I haven't played Pokemon since God, probably Ruby and Sapphire really, I think. And I don't, I didn't even get to really play that all that much. But yeah, uh, it's, uh, I gotta say, I, I've slowed my roll. A little bit with it, just because I'm. Actually, I'm sorry, but that act. that that damn Wulu dude. I'm up to like over a thousand encounters on a wild Wulu, and I have yet to find a shiny, and it is very disgruntled. What the hell is a Wulu? It's the sheep type of Pokemon. Oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I yeah. want him because of his face. He's got a fluffy face, and I need it shiny. I want but, him because of his face. Well, all right. It's. Uh, it's it's still keeping me up in that. I don't want to get into details, but regardless. Oh, okay. yeah, so we'll, let's, that's illegal. That's illegal. We'll, uh, Just it up. <laughs> we'll, we'll get into the main topic of this uh, episode, which is kind of a controversial one. Um, it's it's not anything new, and we've done controversial controversial um, topics on the channel before, as far as like gun violence in video games, violence in video games in general. This one is as far as uh, What's up? I was just going to say, be forewarned, anybody that has watched, listened, read anything from me, watched any of my streams, you know I'm going to go on the rant about something at some point or multiple rants. I apologize in advance, but it's going to happen. Just enjoy it. Just <laughs> I, Eventually, I'm just going to go ahead and go full like Dr. Disrespect level or XQC level rant. All right? Violent speed momentum. It's going to happen. It is going to happen. All right? It's just, it's bound to happen with me. So, just putting that forewarning out there. Harsh language may be included. It's always included. What the fuck am I talking about? Johnson Ty is offended already. Um, so, the 
issue that we're going over today, and I'm I'm going to try and be the mediator here and play both sides, even though I, I'm strongly in agreement with one side, and I think it's going to be blatantly obvious. Um, is our video games addicting? Uh, I know you have you have the the spectrum of the side that you have parents that are like, oh, you know, video games are addicting. My kid stays inside all day and he he doesn't do anything, and then. I've even had people when they're like, Hey, what's this? I hear you stream. It's like, yeah, I, I play video games and people watch me and they tell me how terrible I am. Um, and you make it, some money for doing it. Exactly. And, and uh, <laughs> they kind of give me this weird look. If you play video game, that's a thing. And they're like, Oh, you like, like that, like that ninja guy that makes all that money. No, not anything like that. <laughs> um, if only, I, if only. Right. Yeah. Um, it's, I see, parents on the side of they want their kids to go out and do more things than just stay inside and play video games on the same double edged sword here though a lot of your kids friends are playing those video games they are hanging out with their friends but it's just online and that i mean the winter months are rolling in what what are we all going to be doing we're going to be inside not able to do anything except for spend time with our families and play video games. It's, it's, it's our hobby inside. Now, I mean, I, I know you're going to go off on a rant on this. I'm trying to build my base here. Um, this also leads into the controversy, and I'll touch more on this, of loot boxes. Is it a form of gambling? Is, you know, parents are having issues. I've heard multiple people that I work with tell me, oh, yeah, my kid just spent $50 on Fortnite because my credit card information is attached to, you know, their Xbox Live account. Whose fault is that? Well, exactly. You need to put parental codes on. That's why they're installed on your council, parental codes. They've thought of many ways to, hey, you can only, like, how can I put this? They've thought of ways that, hey, maybe we could do it to where you have to put in a parental code every time you make a purchase. Genius idea. Or you need to limit the spending that you can spend on your Xbox per day. That way, if your kid is like, hey, I'm going to buy like 500 V-Bucks, they can only spend $10 before they're like, nah, you're cut off for the day. You're not spending any more money. So, I mean, it, it how much fault of that, the whole gambling aspect? Because it is up to chance what you get in these loot boxes. And therefore, I can see the gambling aspect of it. Because you'll have... People's okay, take Overwatch for example. You want that Reaper skin from Halloween. Mm -hmm. You spend fifty dollars on loot boxes and you don't get it. You get duplicates of, you know, past stuff or you know, newer stuff that you didn't want. So you're gonna put more money into those loot boxes and you're gonna try and get that Reaper skin. You end up spending like a hundred bucks before you get it. It could be a form of gambling because you're leaving you're spending money, leaving it up to chance on what you want to end up getting or winning in a sense. Mm-hmm. Thoughts? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, the loot box thing. All right, I understand why people think it's a form of gambling in a state that it's a form of gambling because in some aspects it is. Like you said, you can spend fifty, a hundred, two hundred, five hundred bucks and not get the items that you're looking for. But coming from somebody that is a sports gambler, I will tell you that right now, I gamble on sports. It is legal. I do it. Okay, I have won a decent chunk of change from it. But there's a lot of weeks where I get nothing in return. That, to me, is the true aspect of gambling, where you put money into something and you can get nothing in return or you can get something in return. Loot boxes, you are always getting something in return. It may not be what you want. It may not be the item that you are searching for and trying to pay for. And I can understand the frustration oh, in that because I have been one that – goes and tries to get certain skins from loot boxes but majority of the stuff that i buy loot boxes with is from the in-game currency that i earn through the game itself all right but you're always going to get something in return you're never going to buy a loot box and get absolutely nothing you're not going to get it and say oh fuck you you won nothing here you go thank you for your fucking money you idiot Nothing like that is going to happen. Whereas I can I can spend 150 bucks on loot boxes and get a bunch of stuff. May not be everything I want. Might be a few things. Might be some common, rares, legendaries, epics, whatever. I'm going to get something. I go spend money on sports gambling. I leave majority of weeks with absolutely nothing. There's there's a difference there. Whether people want to use like understand that or not, there is a major difference. 
the definition of gambling is uh, play games for chance of chance for money uh-huh. or bet. There's no betting when when it comes to loot boxes. You're not playing for a chance of money. Okay. True. The only one that you could really argue loot boxes fall into is the second definition. Take risky action in the hope of a desired result. Okay. And then the sentence that goes along with that is the British could only gamble that something would turn up. So that's not even, it doesn't even really fall into the same category for what we're discussing, but you could still say that that is an example. But once again, loot boxes, you get a return on your investment, period. Standard gambling, sports gambling, you go to a casino, people lose 10 grand and get absolutely nothing out of it. Now, if you spend 10 grand on loot boxes and you get mad that you didn't get what you wanted, you have a bigger problem gambling, quote unquote, on digital items that are going to have no resale value unless you're playing Counter-Strike and you can sell the skins or uh, pretty soon, I'm sure, Escape from Tarkov will end up seeing people exchange real money for in-game items because it's such a pain in the ass to get some stuff. I love the game, by the way. Absolutely love it. We'll talk about addictive games in a bit, but I absolutely love it. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the loot box thing, and we'll go from there as we continue this discussion. I think, and I hate to wrap it around to Fortnite as an example, but Fortnite has a good system of every once in a while that skin you want comes up on the marketplace and they give you a flat price. Hey, spend this much money if you want this skin. Um, I think games need to start shifting focus more to that and have loot boxes as an in-game reward um, Mm -hmm. to where every time, okay, or not Fortnite, Overwatch is an example. Mm-hmm. You you can level up pretty frequently in that game, and the leveling cap is monstrous. Like it, it, I've only known a couple people in the world that actually have hit the max level capped out because yeah. there's a lot of levels. It's like fifteen hundred or something like that. Yeah, um, something outlandish, something absolutely ridiculous. I think they should do it to where every five levels to or every other level, you get a loot box. Apex Legends, same thing. Every other level, mm-hmm. you get a loot tick. And then the skins that you want, put them in a rotating store that rotates every other day or every day and have five items that are skins. You're still going to have people that want that skin and they're still going to pay money, but they would rather pay $5 to buy the direct skin than pay $10 for five chances of loot boxes to potentially get that skin, not get it, and then pay 10 more dollars to get five more loot box. They're not going to want to do that. They're going to want to buy the skin outright. You're still going to make money. Um, Battle passes, battle passes, you know, they're kind of that happy medium too, because you see everything you get in a battle pass before you buy the battle pass. It's right there in front of you. Right. If you're like, oh man, I really want that skin. It's at level 45. Guess what, man? Buy that battle pass for 10 bucks and grind it out. It, I mean, there's, there's ways around it. I think people are freaking out a little bit more about it than they should be, but that society, unfortunately nowadays, I'm not going to get on that soapbox. Um, it just it's frustrating because a lot of this nonsense and input is coming from people who don't play video games a whole lot um especially the loot box gambling problem i know that government officials were making a bigger deal about it than people who actually were paying for the loot boxes who were not getting what they wanted out of it and and do you and you know why because gambling comes Science. with legal legal gambling comes with a tax that the government can rake in and they're not getting anything from this. It goes directly to the companies that are doing it. Just like everything else, the government is getting their hands into everything. That's what it comes down to. They're not getting their share of it, so boom. They don't want it. This is the conspiracy episode, by the way, sorry. Um <laughs> <laughs> government officials aren't playing games. You're right. Absolutely right. You know, they they the only game that they want to play is how much money they can weasel out of the rest of us. Oh yeah. And, 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 and I, I came across this article that I shared on my Facebook feed and everything earlier. And I, I, I just got to share this because we're talking about government officials and everything and the stupidity that some of them possess. All right. In Vermont, I believe it was, they're looking at banning anyone under 21 from possessing 
owning or using a cell phone. What? That's where I'm going to leave that right there because I, I'm going to go off on a motherfucking tangent. This is not a political show. It's not meant to be. I know we know they can get that way when it comes to gaming, but that's when it, you know, that's when it's included in something that, you know, affects us all as gamers. Cookie chicken is people. Anyways. <laughs> Sorry, I just heard a loud ass bang and I have no idea what the fuck happened. Somebody might be it's breaking It's the government. In. They, know, they know you're talking <laughs> right? shit. Wait, I, I was just talking shit <laughs> now they're here for me already, man. God damn it. That didn't oh. take long at all. And it's, that's what kills me is it, I mean, like I said, I said it before, the government, it, they want to, they want to make calls for, you know, us without even listening to us in a sense. And you're right. The whole taxi and everything, they something, but anyways, going, going back to the whole addictive video games thing. Cause I kind of strayed from that, um, into the loot box thing. Cause it's still triggering me a little bit <laughs> you have rehabilitation centers for gamers now now i get addictive video games skyrim you know world of warcraft for myself mm-hmm. i've even destiny you know when destiny one came out i i was grinding it out with friends and it's just because it's a game that i really enjoy now i think there's a difference between you playing a game that you really enjoy and an unhealthy obsession with a game right those are two very big differences to me yeah. um i could lose myself in skyrim for in the days music, the moment one i mean it's the atmosphere it's about the atmosphere when it comes to games for me if i'm having a good time i'm enjoying what i'm doing i'm not getting pissed off and raging i'm i'm gonna play that game and keep playing it and keep playing it. now if it's call of duty and i hate myself after a couple of games i'll leave it and come back to it like an abusive relationship but that's how that game is. Cuphead. Dude. I, I was sorry, watching... I, uh, I, had to, I had to say it like that just to trigger you. I was watching gameplay of it um, the other day. And I was like, man, maybe I should do a stream of Cuphead again. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I should take up Crystal Meth. Either one's not good for me. <laughs> it, it's just... So I, I, will, I will never ever play cuphead on my channel again it's never gonna happen i beat the dragon i'm done i'm I, done i, I won in my mind anxiety playing wild than i do in real life that is exactly how bumpy feels about <laughs> cuphead okay. Dude, that sums it uh, up perfectly i won't do it even if someone's like hey man let's <laughs> do it co-op i'll help you no 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 uh, oh no it's not ha- happening uh, i uh but Regardless, the whole <laughs> addictive video game thing, it, I can understand if your kid isn't, you know, from a parent's perspective, if your kid's not doing anything and they've spent their entire summer vacation only playing video games, never stepping outside, never going mm-hmm. out and doing anything, you ask them to like go mow the lawn for you because it's one of their chores and they're like, no, I want to sit here and play a video game. Yeah, kick their lazy ass out and make them go do something, you know, but at the end of the day, did you buy them the council? Right. Did you buy and, them the game? And we kind of went through that stuff before on uh, when it comes to mature rated video games and things like that. How when I was working at Walmart, I would have parents cry and bitch and moan because their kid is playing Grand Theft Auto and beating up hookers after they get banged in their car and shit in a dark alley. Well, guess what? You bought the fucking game for them. You can't buy the game if you're not over age. So it's your own goddamn fault. When it comes to the shit with the fucking loot boxes being purchased by people that aren't old enough, the Fortnite skins, everything else, it just makes it, it, you have nobody else to blame but yourself. Be a fucking parent. I don't have kids, so this is coming from kind of an outside looking in, you know, but when I was a kid, everything I did was monitored by my mom, especially any TV show I watched. I wasn't allowed to watch The Simpsons until I was like 14. Even though I kind of snuck and watched them and I would listen out for my mom coming up the stairs and I would run over to the little 13 inch black and white TV that I had with the little dials on it. Kids these, know, kids these days don't understand what the fuck that is. The VHF and UHF channels. Yeah. You know, so I would get up and sprint over to the fucking TV, turn that bitch until I could find the most random fucking thing that was on. And then my mom would want to know why the fuck I was watching world news when I'm like six years old, you know. Uh, but back to the point. Be a fucking parent. Parents complain about everything, but don't know what the fuck their kids are doing. 
They give what? them a phone, a tablet, a console, games, or whatever, and you say, here you go. Have fun. Leave me the fuck alone. You want free parental advice? Say, hypothetically, your kid's playing Gears of War. Loves Gears of War. He's just having a great time playing with it online. You start to play it with him. You get better than him. And then you beat him into the ground every single <laughs> match. I guarantee he's not going to want to play it anymore. Right. It's, it's, it's true. You know, I just, I don't know. I mean, okay. I, I have a child. When she becomes of age and she starts to want to get into video games, if she chooses that path, me and her mother have already talked because we both play video games quite often. Mm-hmm. We're going to set guidelines. And it's important to establish those early when they start getting into things because if you don't, they're going to think there's no limits and they can you know, play as much as they want to or do what they want to. You have to, you have to assert guidelines and rules and regulations. Right. I mean... It, Without them, they, they're just going to do what they want. I mean, it's, it's parenting 101. And I'm not saying I'm the perfect parent. I'm still new at this. She's only two. Right. I mean, I, I can barely get my pants on half the time, let alone change her. So, you know, I'm not saying I have my life together, but I'm smart enough to know that, hey, as much as I play video games, I know that I've been up several times, 24 hours playing a game. And oh, yeah. I... I I wish somebody would have came in and told me, okay, that's enough, man. You need to get some sleep because I hate myself the next day. But I mean, it's, <laughs> we're, it's our hobby. It's what we're passionate about. We play games. Yeah. I, I absolutely. And I've been, I mean, most of us oh have been there. God, I remember, uh, I remember when I was younger, uh, I was a kid, I was in elementary school, maybe middle school at, at most middle school. And we were, uh, we I stayed at a pr- uh, buddy's house because we had a bad snowstorm back home, which we didn't get that often. So when it was bad snowstorm, everything was shut down for days, weeks. I think we were out of school for some like six days because of a snowstorm back home. All right, I know that shit doesn't happen here in Illinois. Did you live in the North but... Pole? <laughs> no, uh, you know, on the East Coast, we were prepared for some snow, and we just got absolutely slammed this year and like such a random time. So like everything was already gone, like the budget was gone, all the salt for the highways and everything was gone. Anyway, school was closed down for like six days, and I'm pretty sure I was getting on somebody's nerves because I was told that I could spend the night at my friend's house for like three nights in a row, and his mom was okay with it, and so like two or three of us stayed over at our buddy's house for like three nights in a row, all right? I don't remember sleeping until probably about 3 a.m. on the third night, like the last night, I think, is when we finally went to sleep. We were playing Nintendo 64, uh, playing Mario Kart, Mario Party, uh, Perfect Dark, GoldenEye, like playing so many different Respect. games. Like, I, I don't, re- like I said, I do not remember going to bed until like 3 a.m. on the third night. And then we got up at like 7 or 8 a.m. and went outside, came back in, started playing again. And then I finally went home and I crashed for probably like a day and a half, I feel like. But oh, yeah. it happens, you know, especially when you're younger, you know, it you're going to do it. You're going to, you're going to have those nights. I know suicide and her brothers and sister all had those kind of nights. I think anybody that's really big into gaming as a big hobby has had plenty of those nights where they're up all night. And it doesn't mean that you're an addict. You just have fun and you're enjoying the hell out of it. But people don't fucking complain when somebody wants to go out to the bar four nights a week and stay out until 3 a.m. I don't have a problem. You have a problem. <laughs> right. You know, so, but people staying at home playing video games or spending money on video games is so much worse than people going out to the bar for five, six nights a week, dropping a hundred bucks a night easily. So, and I mean, I like to go out to the bars every once in a while and have some drinks and hang out and stuff and drop some money on the bar. That's fine. But you can't sit there and bitch about one thing and then try to defend another like people do all the time that are against video games and want to go out to the bars. To me, that drinking like that is more of an addiction by far than the gaming frequently. Unless you're this next story that we'll that I'll get into That's once we get to the next port or get to the next point. <laughs> I like uh I like the chat also said, plus you're not getting, or not, you're not going out getting drunk and wasting money getting in trouble. And that's right. true too. Um, e- e- exactly. It's, you're at home, 
you kick him back. I mean, even if you're just, you know, a casual, which I hate using that word. If you're a casual gamer and you just jump on and you're playing like five, you know, games of search and destroy with your buddies after a long mm-hmm. day of work, you know, it, it people want to sit here and they want to criticize gaming in general saying, oh, it's bad for you, yada, yada, yada. You're wasting your time. It's critical thinking. Yeah. I mean, how look at Portal. Portal is a game about puzzles and figuring shit out. Mm-hmm. It, you can't mindlessly play a game like that. You actually have to think about stuff. It does keep you sharp in a sense. And I know there's that yeah. whole study of like, I can't remember who did it, but I've actually had it happen to me occur a couple of times to where I'll play, you know, Call of Duty one stream and I'll be complete dog shit. I'll be terrible at it. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I'm not having a good day. I go to sleep your brain will actually work out the problems and the mistakes that you made while you were sleeping. And then when you come back to it the next day, you're shit hot. You know, you're, you're going like 38 and two. I mean, it, you're having a good day after that. And then you, you know, a week later you might have the same bad day and then the same thing happens the next day. I can, I can honestly say that back when I was in school, uh, the first time I'm going back now and everything, but on my weekends, me playing Call of Duty, like, all day Call of Duty 4, back in 2008 to 2009, that was, like, all I wanted to do on my two days off because I went to school Monday through Friday and I worked Monday through Friday. I had the weekends off because I needed time to myself to unwind after everything. I didn't want to have to worry about anything. It sucked. It was long-ass days. But when I got to play games on the weekends, it was such a relief and such a chill time for me. That even when I was getting pissed off playing Call of Duty, never in life would I get pissed off playing Call of Duty, right? I know. Um, I It was just so much stress and everything else that was lifted off of me. You know, um, I, yeah, it, it, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, I got to the point where after a while when I hurt my back and I wasn't able to go to the gym a little while later where pretty much gaming was all I ever did. And, you know, I'll kind of share that here in a bit. That's kind of where I can understand where people are coming from when it gets into an addiction. But when it comes to games, like you said, like hanging out with friends, talking with friends and everything else like that, my relationship was built on gaming. Period. Uh, My fiance, Suicide, and I are together because of gaming. That's how we met. That's how we got together. And that has changed my life in so many different ways. That's how I've met so many people that I know right now that I call close friends is because of gaming, period. A buddy of mine and I were talking on Facebook. You know, he shared some images and we were kind of reminiscing about some games that we used to play back in the day. We would have like a group of eight or nine of us that would run Madden seasons together and we would go over to our one buddy's house, sit there and play our games. And then we would get together like a few days later, do it again. And it was just the camaraderie, the trash talk, the competition, just the hanging out and bullshitting and, you know, trying to fuck other people up while they're playing their games, you know, just trying to mess with them and see how bad we can get them to screw up and shit, you know. There's so many different things that go into the gaming aspect that people don't see anymore because the majority of it's online. But gaming, people say that gaming has made us, especially online gaming and everything, has made us more antisocial than anything. I think it's the complete opposite because I'll go into lobbies and I'll talk to people that I don't even fucking know and will never talk to again, but we bullshit and we have fun. As a matter of fact, uh, Maltry and I were playing uh, Call of Duty last week and we got a couple of guys that ended up checking out our YouTube and uh, Twitch channels and everything be- because of my voice. Like the first thing they said was something about my voice in the game and told me that I should be on radio or something like that. And I was like, well, we actually do a podcast. And then they went and checked us out, gave us a follow, a subscription, and boom, Basically. right there. You know, so just something as simple as talking to people leads to fucking anything. You know what I mean? Like it. <sighs> right. And it's it's kind of funny. Um, exactly. Twitch is proof that gaming is social. We right. went to, uh, sorry to cut you off, Bumpy, this last thing I'm going to say before no, I pitch good, it back to you. Uh, suicide, myself. Um, you know, whoops you and a couple of his friends. I can't remember their names right off the top of my head. I feel bad for that. Went to Twitch Chicago community meetup. Hundreds of people there. Met some awesome people. Unfortunately, I was feeling like dog shit, so I didn't really mingle and talk to people as much as I had wanted to and planned to. Um, I played in the Super Smash Bros. tournament. I haven't played Super Smash Bros. since the 64. 
I got the round three. I was pretty happy with it. Talked to the guys that were there playing in the tournament and shit like that. Like stuff that people that you'll never meet again unless you go to these events and people that you never would have met without going to something that was based on gaming. Right. It, it just blows my mind uh, kicking it back to, like you said, it, people don't think it's a social thing. And like, like Chad said, it's like sitting in a basement on PC playing Minesweeper, which Minesweeper is a good game. Um, it's one of those things <laughs> in your underwear drinking Mountain Dew. True. Um, I must be leaving my camera on after streams. Uh, <laughs> it's one of those things where, like you said, you can jump into a lobby with people you don't even know in a competitive game and you can work together. And there's such a good feeling about winning a competitive game with like five or six other people that you don't know. You guys right. came together. You just met five seconds ago and you're already in a game steamrolling mm -hmm. this other team. And you know, that other team is getting pissed. <laughs> but it, it's such a great feeling in, too it's such a great feeling <laughs> case in point gonna go a little world of warcraft nerdy on you here i was in a dungeon the other day and there's a healer a tank and a couple dps i was a dps the tank's supposed to pull aggro the healer heals everybody and then we fly through well, one of the dps was trying to pull aggro and he was boasting man i got like 400 item level just Tank, you know, just, just go healer in your healer aspect and don't even tank. I'll aggro everything in tank. Not something you're supposed to do. The tank is there for a reason. It's because he can take a lot of damage. Then we just kind of poke, 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 and then get the hell out of there. This guy was pulling more mobs to us that it overwhelmed the tank and healer. And it killed, like, we, we wiped except for him. And the tank's like, nah, man, let me do my thing. Let's just get through this, all right? He's like, nah, man, throw throw aggro on me and my pet and let's just roll through this. And it's like, that's not how the game is meant to be played, man. We're all on the same page except you. You just want to be a dick. And collectively, the other four of us came together and pretty much told this guy, dude, you're being an asshole. Get the hell out of here. And he ended up leaving. And the rest of us were cool. The tank messaged me after the dungeon was done in like 15 minutes. I was like, hey, man, I really appreciate you having my back on that. You know, I know we don't know each other, but... Just you supporting me in that and being, you know, on the same page with everybody, I really appreciate that. Right. He didn't have to go out of his way to me. But the fact that he was like, hey, man, that guy was being <laughs> a dick. Thanks for taking my side on that and having my back. Because the tank was being very polite about the situation. He wasn't like, man, fuck you. You're being a dick. He was like, look, dude, let me do my thing. Let's just roll through this. We'll get through it. You know, whatever. And right. the guy that was like, nope, I want to tank. You know, you don't know what the hell you're doing. You don't know how to play this game. I, I have like over, you know, 400 hours on this character, yada, yada. It's like, dude, none of that matters. We're all just trying to get through this together. If we don't work together, right. we're going to wipe and have to do the whole thing all over again. Get on the same page hey. as everybody else. Yeah, you know, shit like that, you don't want to have to start all over again because people fuck up, especially if it's people that you don't know, you know, uh, that are doing things like that, I should specify. Um because it, it during raids and things like that, I mean, you can see games where raids take people four or five hours to complete. The last thing they want to deal with is somebody that's not trying to work together as a team that's costing them time and effort on these raids. You know, a lot of people now don't have time to dedicate that much time to these raids. So like, that's literally the only thing they're able to do that night gaming wise. And then you got some asshat like that, that basically ruins the entire thing. And mm -hmm. just makes you miserable to where, A, you get pissed off and, you know, you just say fuck it and have a miserable time. Or, B, you just get so tired of dealing with that shit that you just stop playing that game altogether because it's all you run into. Because we yeah. all know some games are really hard to get a group of people together on at the same time. We all have different schedules, have different things going on in our lives. It's difficult to find a, group, a party of four or five, whatever your game calls for, to be able to run raids like that or complete dungeons and all those kind of things. And, yeah, it happens. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I probably wouldn't have been as polite as that tank. Everybody knows me. I have a mouth and I have a temper. And I would have been told, telling that dude to go fuck himself and every everything else under the sun. Oh, yeah. You know, I, <laughs> it's it, the one experience I can say that was very humbling when it came to working with a group of people that I didn't know was Destiny 1 raids. Because they're so heavily, there's such a heavy mechanic on everybody has their role, their own task that they have to do at specific mm -hmm. boss fights, 
or the group wipes. It could be, hey, you got to stand on this platform by yourself and defend it, you know, while all these heavily, you know, powered enemies are coming at you. And if you die, the entire team gets wiped and it's on you. And I thought the first time I went into a raid by myself with five random people that I, I have never talked to before, I'm like, man, if I mess up one time, these guys are going to crucify me. I messed up one time on the last boss and I'm like, here we go. I'm getting kicked. No, it, they were very polite. They're like, hey, man, you know, if you need help, I'll try and angle my shots over towards you to take a little bit of aggro off you on, from my plate because I'm I'm wiping my guys quicker than you're wiping yours. So I'll help you out and help you pick up the slack because I was lower leveled. And I've also seen it to the other side to where, you know, we've been on the final boss for an hour and a half now to two hours and somebody's not pulling their weight. And then people start to get aggravated and they're like, you know what? I don't have time to finish this because this dude keeps fucking up and he won't ask for help. Right. And that comes with uh, other games. Like for me, everybody knows, well, most people know I'm a big Call of Duty player, big first person shooter player in general. My version of that is when we're playing games like Search and Destroy, Domination, or whatever, and you got the guys that are just either camping somewhere or they're playing, they're not doing any kind of communication, then they want to talk shit at the end of the game about how people suck, and they're the ones bringing them down when he's going like, you know, three and nine or some stupid shit on Search and Destroy because he's not telling anybody where somebody's at when he sees them or he's doing stupid shit, taking bad shots, whatever the case might be. And that shit drives me absolutely crazy. Now, obviously, WoW, Destiny, Call of Duty, games like that are all different, but they all have a similar problem to an extent when it comes to people doing that kind of shit. Oh, yeah. I and mean, it's it, aggravating. You got the guy on Domination who has like 78 kills and 10 deaths, but he has zero captures of any mm-hmm. points. And it's like, you're not helping anybody but padding your KD ratio. Oh, you're not God. benefiting. <laughs> Uh, Suicide and myself were playing uh, Domination on Shoot House on Call of Duty uh, a little bit ago, right? And I think I got it on video somewhere on the stream. So we're dominating, like not dominating with all three flags, but we're killing this team the entire fucking game, right? Our team decides to dominate at one point. Domination, if you ever play Domination on Call of Duty, dominating unless you have a great squad that knows the Take spawn. two flags. Right. Take two flags. <laughs> Leave one so that you know where the spawn points are. Anybody that knows the game will tell you that. You don't dominate unless it's towards the end of the game. You're already winning and you just kind of want to rub it in. Or like I said, you have a great squad that knows what the fuck they're doing. They're calling out. They're communicating. And they know the game. So we start dominating. The other team takes two flags from us right off the bat because they're spawning everywhere. We're literally watching our teammates near the end of the game. We're up 196 to 192. Oof. All right. They, our team, actually, I'm sorry. It was, uh, it was 195, 192. Cause they ended up beating us by one point. Our teammates ran away from the flags as they're standing on them. Literally spawning next to the flags. And running away. Okay. I watched them as I died trying to cap the B flag. Because all we need to do was hold on to one extra flag. That's it. Because if you don't know how domination runs, you get a fl- you get a point for each flag every so many seconds. If you're up by, if it's 195 to 192, they're going to come back if they have two flags and beat you by 1.200 to 199. So just to give a quick little explanation out of this. We literally watched our teammates run away from the flags and we lost because of it. I plugged my mic in and I just started going ape shit because it pissed me off to no extent. Like, Damn, why? dude. That's, well, I, uh, I don't even know. Like, it, yeah, so it that's the kind of teammates that are cancerous. And that's honestly, that's what brings a lot of toxicity out into the gaming community because of people like that. The people that are toxic without saying a single word in the game. Oh, but yeah. toxic because they're because of their actions and not even team killing, nothing like that. Uh, that's what I was going to say. Too, Hello from my location. At... What's up, Chad from the what? Facebook feed. Oh, what's up, Chad? That's angry pig. Check yeah. out angry pig, 3d labs on Facebook. There's a lot of great 3d prints. <laughs> See, we got the plug still, even when he's, in, oh, yeah. he's on vacation. Still, uh, uh, still waiting for psycho mask, by the way. <laughs> it, uh, 
I was going to touch on that too when you said team killing was the whole like search and destroy. You got that toxic teammate, or you'll see it on the other mm-hmm. team in the kill feed at the beginning of the match where they kill somebody and then search and right destroy. Off, right off Right off Search and destroy. If you die, you're waiting until the next yeah. round. So if your teammate does it, that's extra salty, man. And, and you remember back in uh, you remember back in COD Four, like hardcore search and destroy. There was no getting kicked. There was no uh, ricochet like there was in Modern yep. Warfare Two and the newer games after that. You could spawn up every round, shoot a rocket right into the ground on hardcore and kill your whole team. I can't tell you how many times that bullshit happened to me. Oh, it yeah. pissed me off so much to where I stopped playing Hardcore Search for a while. And that was my game type, man. I loved Hardcore because for a lot of people out there, I know they don't like it. Because it is, to me, it's easier than Core. It really oh, is. I love it. I love it so but much. But I like it because of the same reasons why I like games like uh, Escape from Tarkov, uh, Squad, some of these other realistic, realistic games. A couple of shots will kill you. So you got to play it differently to me. You know... And that's why I love it. But I love core as well because it's more competitive and everything else and a bit more intense as far as fast pace. But Hardcore Search and Destroy was my favorite game mode and I had to stop playing it for quite a while because of people doing that bullshit. And it drove me fucking crazy to the point where I was pretty sure I was going to stroke out at 20 years old. You know what I mean? Like, I just, it, it was it was just coming. I knew it was coming. This is the big one. I'm going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It... Oh man! Well, we we definitely took that tangent off on a oh yeah we went, we went direction. Every, we went everywhere, but we covered. I mean, it's good we though. Covered, yeah, one to two. We covered what we, we wanted we, to do with the addiction and shit like that. Um. Oh, one about, thing that I was gonna say. One thing that I do want to say about the addiction thing, if you can give me a minute before you. Yeah, I don't know no, no, go for it. Go next. for it. I will say because uh, there have been uh, fairly recent issues that have come up in other countries, mainly. Um, if you are a gamer and you like to have long sessions, get up, walk around, yes. do do basic things, stand up. Uh, some people, a lot of people now are moving towards the standing desks and things like that. Uh, back when our treadmill worked, I had I would move my uh, 360 into our other room that had a tube TV. It was a tube TV, but I didn't care. I would move my 360 over there and I would play Madden while I'm on the treadmill walking for an hour. You know, shit like that, or right. I would play like a campaign on Halo or whatever else. Like I would put it on there and walk for an hour or until I burn roughly, you know, eight hundred to a thousand calories or whatever. Or I would just keep going if I was if I was feeling good and I was walking. That's what I would do. You know, but people are dying like overseas. We've seen people that have sat there and played League of Legends or whatever other game for twelve, sixteen, eighteen, twenty four hours straight, sitting down, not getting up once, and dying from blood clots and shit. You've got to get up and move around. I'm a big dude, all right. I'm a I'm a big guy. I'm a hefty feller. Okay, that, that's to put it lightly. But I still get up every once in a while. I need to get back to doing it like I used to in between rounds of Search and Destroyer at the end of the games of COD. I would do sit ups and push ups based on how many kills yep. and death and shit like that that I got. You know, um, got to be active. That's where the addiction really can fuck you up is if you're not doing anything to help yourself. I I was about to actually mention that too. Is that you know if you lose a game, do ten push-ups. If you win a game, do five. I mean, yeah. it's. I would do uh know. like generally I would do um, what was it like I would do push-ups for every kill that I went positive, and then I would do like two sit-ups for every kill that I went negative. There you go. That's a good and, idea. Like, the next day I would switch it up, or like I would end up switching up and doing like leg raises and shit like that. Mm-hmm. You know, like I that that was just my thing here. I, I would figure out some kind of formula to do with it to where by the end of the night, you know, I was feeling pretty fucking tired and exhausted, but I felt really good at the same time because I got my gaming in and I did a little bit of a workout with it and had fun with it. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, I mean, I, I'm getting older. Okay. I'm not old, but I'm getting older. And doing that 12 hour stream for Modern Warfare. I had to get up after an hour and a half to two hours and walk around, do something, because my ass was numb. I mean, I I sit right. with my legs crossed in my chair as is. Like as as we're speaking, I can't feel anything from my waist down I, right now. I'm too I'm too big to be able to sit with my legs crossed but, in my chair. Like there's no way. Dude, I, I hate it because. I'm I'm only five five and my feet dangle in the chair that I'm sitting in now and I absolutely fucking hate it, so I have to sit cross legs so I feel like some kind of a man. Anyways, but I I can see uh, that though because I got the same chair as you, just a different color, and these chairs are pretty good size. 
Yeah. These and, chairs are meant for guys my size. That is, so, sort of padding my ass. Um, it works great it, for me. It doesn't maybe work great extra, for me. Maybe it's extra padding on my ass that I got. I don't oh, know. Dude, it's, <laughs> I did. I, I will say, not to go off on a tangent on chairs, I had one of those uh, fucking racer chairs or whatever. Most uncomfortable thing I've ever sat in in my entire life. That Those chairs Hate are... Them. Uh, Secret Labs, I think, if I went to a chair like that, it would probably be Secret Labs. Because I love the construction and everything else of them. Those <sighs> chairs, to me, are more about like the like the social standing as far as streamers and the gaming community goes. People see you have a DX racer and it's just like it draws them to you for some fucking reason. I don't get why. You this know, guy's so edgy. <laughs> like, right. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it it's like the scuff controllers. You know, people like want to talk about the scuff controllers and then like back in the day it was Astro A forties. If you didn't have Astro A forties for sound horning you weren't shit. Yada yada yada. Granted, Astro A40s were the best ones with the mix in it because they could hear every little thing. But you didn't need them to be excellent at a game. But it was that social standing type of deal, you know, yeah. uh, kind of like iPhones and shit are now. Like people think that if you don't have an iPhone, you ain't got shit. But <laughs> I know I can I see that on your face. I see your face. But the point being <laughs> is that just because shit is the most popular and the most expensive doesn't always mean it's the best product. And people need to stop following that fucking train of thought and that path and finding shit that is actually beneficial for them right. instead of following the trends. Because it makes you nothing but sheep. Period. Your equipment doesn't make you better at a game. No. It, it's, it, that's fact. I mean, I, I could... I'm sure if Shroud had a regular keyboard, a regular mouse... You know, uh, the same like hundred dollar headset that I'm wearing, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, the same, you know, equipment just to play the game. He would still be shroud. He would still right. be good. I mean, it's not going to be like, well, now he's going to be, you know, shit because he's using this, you know, coarser mouse and stuff like that. It... The only thing that I can honestly say can help you be better is something that your hands are going to be comfortable on. Yeah, something that fits your hands a little bit better. It doesn't matter if it's a five dollar mouse or two hundred dollar mouse. If it fits your hands and you're more comfortable with it, and it allows for the movement better, you'll be better. A uh, better response time monitor TV. You're gonna be better because you're gonna yeah, have yeah, a I'll give you response that. time. But but that's what I mean. Like that's literally the only thing. I mean, I've had times where I play with just my like five dollar Walmart earbuds in. Because I don't feel like going through and having my headset over my ears, and I'll just play with like one earbud in. And then halftime on my streams, people might see me go like this because I'll be playing, streaming, and I'll be talking to Suicide, and she doesn't have her headset on, so I'm talking to her and we're communicating while we're playing. So I'm not even using my headset to its full potential, but I'm still doing pretty fucking good in the game. It has nothing to do with all this extra shit, mm -hmm. unless it's something that has like a direct purpose like a one millisecond response time monitor. You don't need oh, yeah. 4K or 8K or 1440p to be better at it. It just makes something visually more appealing. You know, have something that's going to have a higher refresh rate, higher frames per second. You know, it, the extra shit is just that extra shit. Pretty much. Well, on that note, we're hitting that time frame. <laughs> I'm sure yeah. we'd probably go for another half hour on this. Oh, we could. Episode. Yeah, we really could. Let's, and that's why we said, you know, it's kind of one that's controversial and we'll, and we'll go off on tangents and rants and shit. But we warned you. We warned you. <laughs> we just have a disclaimer at the beginning of each episode from now on. This one's going to be a rough one, folks. <laughs> that's, that's what I, I want to get that made up. I, I would love to be able to get that little, uh, like a little scene of that, of like us reading that off or some shit, like some stupid voice or whatever. And have it just like, scroll across the episode. Like, a, always like a PSA, like, hi, yeah. I'm Bumpy Runk. Today's episode. <laughs> That'd be fucking uh, perfect. I want to do it. I would love to fucking do it. Our production yeah. quality will get better with time as we continue to improve on things and we work out the kinks with live streaming and everything else like that. I just thought about it. We probably could use Discord since there's only the two of us on this episode. We've already filmed it. Okay, you shut your mouth. <laughs> We're done. We'll uh, keep that in mind for next time when it's only two of us doing an episode. But, you know, we'll get it figured out. We'll continue to build up and continue to expand. Like I said, we just got flooded with fucking followers. Thank you all. I'm not going to read them all off. I apologize. Yeah, but guys. it was a lot. 
Uh, everybody that's been in the chat tonight, we've been hitting, uh, at one point, I think we were over 10 viewers all together. So that's fucking awesome. Nice. Uh, a lot of chatting going on in the, uh, in the chat. You know, um, people trolling, people talking, you know, adding some good points for the stream. And that's why I wanted to get into the streaming. I don't know how you felt, but, you know, people that are watching and commenting, giving their opinions and their viewpoints and then allowing us to respond. I love it. I think it's awesome. You know, Except for so. when they comment on my McDonald's Wi-Fi. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, no. But with that, I think we're ready to wrap up. Yeah. Um, I think she's ready for us to wrap up too. Uh, so we, call of Duty we've, been, call of Duty we've been consistent with this Thursday streaming and recording. So I think that's kind of our go-to day um, from now on. We, uh, we're usually pretty consistent with the times. I think we're kind of getting back on a, a regular schedule. Um, but yeah, if you happen to miss the stream, we always post it a couple days after to uh, our mm-hmm. YouTube channel. So go check that out. It's middle of nowhere entertaining. We also, uh, Besides the Potato Wing podcast, we also have the Crimson Mask. It's a kind of bi-weekly wrestling podcast talking about wrestling. If you're a wrestling fan, go check it out. It's a pretty good one. Um, other than that, you can find us here pretty much every Thursday. Safe to say. I mean, we've been consistent with it for like two, three weeks now, so it's mm-hmm. been working out. I think, uh, yeah, I think this might be like our best night to be able to go to. Good, good time. Uh, seems like everybody should hopefully be available. Although the only thing that sucks, my days off just got bumped, so I will be working Fridays and Saturdays. But I'll still try to line it up to where Thursdays I'm available for, you know, for this, so that we can have some consistency and uh, continue. Um, the only thing that sucks is I won't have that extra time Friday and Saturday because I'll be hopefully working overtime to be able to do the editing and the adjusting onto the video and sound wow. files. But we'll we'll get it figured out. Well, I'll go from there, and you know, baby steps. It's a working process. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We're getting there. We're we're building up. We're getting new viewers, new followers, new commenters. People are asking me how it's going. I've talked. I'm talking to more people at work now that you know have been watching and talking to us. that have been following us on Twitch now. A couple of people are like, oh, didn't know you guys are into that. You know, let me check it out. What's it called? They checked it out. They told me they liked it, and you know, they've given their opinions that we can approve on some stuff. Some people don't like it. Whatever. Not everybody's thing. Not everybody's cup of tea. Nobody gives a fuck. Everybody's opinion is just that. So, but yeah. It is what it is. You're not going to please everybody. So, exactly. And this, uh, this is a hobby. We're not doing this to make tons of money and we're not right. doing this to be famous. This is a hobby. It, it, it always has been. I mean, this this is just something we're passionate about. We like to talk to people. We like to talk to other gamers. At, at some point, I hope I have people that watch this channel. They're like, hey, man, I've seen your podcast. I'd love to jump on Call of Duty with you sometime, something like that. You know, it, yeah. it would just be nice. It, it's nice to have a small community grow into a larger community of people that enjoy and share your opinions, don't share your opinions. You can watch the channel and disagree with everything we say, but that's your opinion. You know, we're, we're never going to argue with anybody in the chat over something. It's just right. different opinions, you know, different strokes, and, different folks. And I, w- I, w- I would like to say I would love to have, like, people that are watching and chatting if they want to be on an episode to where we kind of debate something. I'm all for that. You yeah. know, we can do we can do an episode where it's centered around debates on specific topics. I'm perfectly I'm perfectly fine with that. I would love to do that as long as they understand that there are certain things that cannot be said. You know, still got to watch out for in terms of service and everything like that. But yeah, I think it'd be fun. <laughs> all right. Well. On that note, we're going to wrap it up. This will conclude episode 21 of the Potato Aim Podcast. I am Bumpy Rug. You can find me streaming usually on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays on twitch.tv slash Bumpy Rug. So go check out my channel. Play a lot of Call of Duty. Looking to put Dauntless back in the rotation. I got a couple dudes that uh, want to run some Dauntless, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, going to be setting up some shiny hunting uh, on the old Nintendo Switch here. See how that goes. But actually be streaming right after this, doing some doubles with Johnson Tat 55 He was in chat. Uh, might do a little 1v1, just depends on the time frame, but I'll be on for about an hour doing all that. So come check it out if you got nothing better to do than to watch this poorly put together 12-year-old struggle to uh, carry his team. All right, and I am Raven F. You can find me on twitch.tv slash Raven F, on Instagram at Raven F underscore, and Twitter at Raven F zero underscore O. I've been streaming Call of Duty quite a bit some Fortnite. Um, got my first win of the season because we mostly have been playing, like, um, what the hell is the big fucking game? Team Rumble. 
we've mostly been playing Team Rumble this season. So, and I really haven't played it too much since Call of Duty came out. Um, stream Call of Duty, like I said, uh, you gotta bear with me though if you're watching my Call of Duty streams or anything from my PlayStation because I've been using the uh, PlayStation Remote Play on my PC to get the screen up and then I'm screen capturing that and streaming it. But it's been running pretty smoothly the last couple of weeks or the last few times, not really a couple of weeks, but it's been running pretty smoothly the last few times I've done it. I'm going to be working on streaming uh, like Path of Exile on PC. I want to start it out. Uh, let me see. Live on Twitch. Uh, it's live on Twitch there, uh, Daryl. Don't know why. Um, I had it up on my phone. Anyway. Oh, uh, crap. What else was I saying here? I lost my train of thought. Oh, Socials. Path of Exile. Uh, yeah, did my socials. Uh, Path of Exile, uh, Diablo, uh, maybe some single-player games. I need to get back into playing The Witcher, Batman titles, all this kind of stuff. So I might be streaming a lot more of that. Uh, always Call of Duty. Always Call of Duty. Um, but, yeah, so going to continue to grow, do this thing, you know, have fun doing it. As Bumpy said, it's a hobby. I'm not expecting much out of it other than to have fun and meet people. So, in conclusion, once again, I am Rave Enough, and uh, you find us on – hey. I got a notification. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I know. I got a notification that uh, we got a play from iTunes. Is that officially up? Have you gotten an email for that? Have I checked if we got a notification or approved? Dude, the last time I checked, my you know what? We'll talk about it off stream. Okay. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> we, we might be us. on Apple. We might be on Apple. Yeah, we might Who be knows? Apple. You might be on Apple. I mean, we're getting listens from uh, Europe, from Canada, like all over the country, all over the world in the country. It's surprisingly. So it's fucking awesome. Um, but yeah, so check us out on hopefully iTunes, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Google Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere that you can find a podcast, try finding us, Middle of Nowhere Entertainment, or search Potato Aim, period. Boom. We're done. It's over an hour. Going on rants and shit. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, everybody, for uh, watching, listening, chatting, and everything else. Have a great one. This was episode 21. Bye.